All right, so we just came back from our whiteboard and saw that our program's doing well. It, uh, you know, theoretical value for the minimum distance matched what is output by our program. So we're doing good so far. Now, as I, we mentioned before, we want to consider, you know, what attributes of the problem, you know, so what attributes of our particles will make that minimum distance smaller. So, you know, if we're trying to achieve fusion, how can we, how can we make that process more likely? So the first thing is, you know, if we give it, if we give the incoming particle more energy, it should be able to get closer. So it should be able to go farther before, you know, the energy is depleted by, um, by that repulsive force. So let's look at, we can kind of play around to see, um, you know, what minimum speed the particle needs before it, you know, just touches <laughs> that target. So if we go here... We can just change that initial velocity. So I can go up here right now, it's 50. We can see, you know, we can try first 60. I'll run this. Okay, so we have a smaller room distance than before. So now it's 49 before it was like, you know, 68. Let's go up another bit. So let's try 70. And if I press this, we see that they just touched, so our, our particles, um, you know, just seem to overlap in our simulation. And then we do get a smaller minimum distance as well. So, providing more energy to that incoming particle. Um, you can also look at things like the charge of that incoming particle. So, what do you think would happen then? So, if we change the charge of the particle, well, we have, well, let's look at what we had here. So we had our light, it's our charge changes our electric field, right? Because we have this expression for our electric field and that was what was basically changing our position. So well let's just test that for a second. So we have Q Q target. So let's change that. Let's make it bigger just for argument's sake. So let's make that two and let's see what happens. So we play that. And we see the minimum distance is a little bit greater. Um, and just to make it a little bit more clear, let's change our initial velocity back to what we had before, which is 50. So let's play that one more time. And it, our minimum distance looks like, well, what did we have before? We calculated, what was it, around 68.9 or so? So now we have, well, it's at 121. So it's almost double the distance, a little bit less. Um, so it looks as though changing the charge of it, making it bigger at least, increases our minimum distance. So if you have a greater charge, remember our electric field dependent on our depends on our charge. So if we have a greater charge, we have that greater repulsive force. So the chargers aren't going to want to get as close to each other. Because remember, like if they're like charges, they repel. So if they're higher in charge. They want to repel even more, right? That makes sense. Just to be complete, let's see what happens if we actually uh, decrease our charge instead of increasing it. Now, normally you can't actually have half of a charge, but just for argument's sake, let's say somehow we get half the charge of a proton. Let's see what happens. Oh, so now we get a lot closer. So now we only have a minimum distance of 37. So it looks like... What we would expect to happen, well, if the charge is greater and uh, the minimum distance is greater, same thing happens when we have a smaller charge, less charge. They get closer and closer together because they have less charge between the two. So they don't care as much if they get closer together, if they actually had feelings. But now I'm just going to look at the mass of the incoming particle. If I change the mass of the incoming particle from 1 to 2, and I'll change the charge of our target back to one so that everything's back to 
all the charge values are back to one. All right, so let's look at the, the effect of that mass change. So it comes in, comes in, and it also has a decreased minimum distance. So again, we're comparing that 37 to what value we had when we initially ran it, that 68.9. Okay, now, so increasing the mass decreases the minimum distance. Does that make sense? Well, well, when we think back to like forces and mass, right? I mean, just your basic equation in Newton's second law, right? Forces mm -hmm. equal to mass times acceleration. Well, if I increase the mass, say I double it like we did in this instance, and I keep the for like the forces the same, well, shouldn't that decrease the acceleration? Well, if the acceleration decreases, then that would make sense because then there's less force, less or less acceleration that's basically pushing the particle back. So it's going to be able to get closer because it's not accelerated as much. So I guess that makes sense that the minimum distance then would be smaller if we increase the mass. Yeah, so don't be, you know, tripped up when we say since the mass increases, the acceleration decreases. Since the acceleration in this case is pushing it back from where it came, that means we're pushing it less outwards, you know, away from the target. So that's how we can get you know, farther in its initial direction um, with that decreased acceleration. So just remember to keep track of where things are pointing. 